Hi everyone. In a series of question and answers from industrial microbiology, in this video we are going to discuss one more question that is write a note on the industrial importance of actinomyces, bacteria, yeast, mounds, which are also called as filamentous fungi. So coming to the different types of microorganisms which are very useful in the industrial purposes are bacteria, actinomyces, yeast, filamentous fungi and even algae in the single cell protein production. And these are all going to be of uh, highly versatile and diversified organisms with many positive traits which are responsible for their usage in many industrial, not only in the industrial, in the biotechnological applications also. And these microorganisms are going to be required for the large scale productions of uh, economically important products uh, which are going to be of uh, foods, pharmaceuticals, wine, beer, fuels must meet uh, some certain criteria for their usage both in the bi biotechnological and industrial microbiology process. For example, if we treat the products such as vitamin B12, the streptomyces from actinomyces members are going to be used in as a vitamin supplements. In the same manner, lactic acid is going to be used as a chemical reagent which was prepared or synthesized from the lactobacillus delbrueckii. Then citric acid, aspergillus nizer is the organism which is producing this and we know this is going to be used as a good pre food preservative. Like this acetic acid, ethanol, that is saccharomyces, which is a chemical reagent drink. And even the penicillin is an antibiotic that was being synthesized from the organism called as Penicillia chrysogenum, which is a filamentous fungi. So like this, we are having the different types of the products uh, are going to be synthesized by using the microorganisms in the industrial level. So let's see all these microorganisms one by one in detail where they are specifically useful in the industrial productions. The first one, actinomyces. As I said that actinomyces are the bacterial members but they look like the fungi that's why we call them as actinomycetes. And these are gram-positive, aerobic and spore-forming bacteria present uh, widespread in the nature and we can find that in the soil, water and uh, majorly in the composting materials. And these uh, actinomycetes members are going to be of nocadia, actinomycetes, streptomyces, micromonospora. So these are going to have the mycelial morphology which resembles the fungi and uh, majority of this group are going to be known for their antibiotic production that means whatever the antibiotics that we are having majority of them are going to be synthesized by using these actinomyces members only and these actinomyces are going to use the chemo uh, organo as they are of a uh, chemo organotropic organisms they use the organic molecules or the substrate to derive their carbon source. And these actinomyces members have the capacity of degrading the chitin, agar cellulose, paraffin, rubber and keratin. And one of the biggest advantages of these organisms is they produce various bioactive metabolites that are used to produce various drugs such as antifungal, antiparasite along with the anti biotics and specific industrial significance of these actinomyces are actinomyces are going to be of well organized or recognized because they produce a primary and secondary metabolites which are having a economic significance and these are going to produce the enzymes such as lipase cellulase amylase which are used in the industrial fermentation processes and they are able to produce some valuable antibiotics uh, including amphoterin, then neomycin, vancomycin, zentamycin, erythromycin, nistatin, novobycin, chloramphenicol, etc. And they are also going to be uh, used 
for the as a plant growth promoting agents that means of uh, allow for adding to the plants they are going to enhance the plant growth and they produce a bio pesticide agents used to control the pests in the farmland they are going to have the application in the bio remediation area also and they produce a protease enzyme which are going to be used as anti inflammation agent and also in the cancer treatment even actinomyces are going to produce enzymes that have the application in the wine production so currently about 75% of antibiotics are going to be derived from these actinomyces species only especially streptomyces and micromonospora species or the genus are used in the production of antibiotics so this is all the specific industrial significance of uh, actinomyces then moving to the next one bacteria and as we know the bacteria are the prokaryotic cells single cell and ubiquitous in nature that means they are going to be present widespread and this bacteria are going to be a uh, were in employed in various industrial process for the production of goods or the products which are very significant to man animals plants and the environment and these bacterial mode of nutrition is very simple they derive their uh, energy carbon from organic and inorganic materials and they can grow both in presence and absence of oxygen some may also have the capacity of growing as a facultative organism in the presence or absence of oxygen and the bacteria example in concern to industrial importance are the genus of bacillus streptomyces then lactobacillus clostridium escherichia leuconostoc acetobacter azetobacter and xanthomonas so these are the few genus of uh, bacteria where having the specific significance in the area of industries then what are the significant bacteria and what they are producing means these bacteria are going to be employed in bio leaching activities in which insoluble metals are converted into the soluble metals that is number one next many bacteria are having the capacity of uh, reducing the iron that is example is iron reducing bacteria where they thrive by reducing the ferric iron to ferrous iron and the manganese to manganite and these bacteria can be used to leach the ferric and the manganese metals from soils and sediments to form a range of reducing metals which can include magnet and sardite the ability of these organism do this can result in in a change in sediment structure and this holds the potential to control water flow in aquifers and these bacteria could be exploited to produce bio materials such as magnetite that are of very commercial value and bacteria also produces enzymes that drive the fermentation process and they are important for the production of protein as well as amino acids vitamins and some species of xanthomonas uh, a proteobacterium is going to exhibit the ability to produce the acidic exopolysaccharide named as xanthum gum and this xanthum gum is used as a thickening and stabilizing agent in food and as well as in the cosmetic ingredients to prevent separation and corynebacterium glutamaceum is the one which produces the amino acid called glutamic acid and this is going to be very much useful as a common additive in the food production where it is going to be named as monosodium glutamate and these corynebacterium species are often used to produce amino acids utilized in the food processing and these corynebacterium species is also able to produce uh, uh, to convert the steroids and in the degradation of uh, hydrocarbons and each of these processes are significant in the pharma industry and as well as in the 
clean up of environment respectively. For example, steroid conversion is an important process in the development of pharma, which are used for the treatment of infectious diseases. While the degradation of hydrocarbons such as oil is important in the breakdown and elimination of environmental toxins. And these bacteria, not chorionic, the bacteria also able to have the production of acetic acid that is also important for the production of certain foods. And we all know the lactic acid bacteria which is very, also, uh, very much useful in the production of certain food. And most antibiotics can be naturally sourced or produced from bacteria. Even certain bacteria are going to be employed in the production of biofertilizers. That is Bacillus thuringiensis is the best example. Then insulin is now largely produced from a genetically modified bacterium called as E. coli. And previously this insulin was uh, sourced from the pancreas of the slaughtered pigs and cows. But that was totally shifted after having this industrial emergence of uh, products produced from the microorganisms. Genetically engineered microbes produce insulin in a pure form that is less likely to cause allergic reactions than insulin from the slaughtered cows and the pigs. So these are the few specifically industrial importance of bacteria. So we have seen the actinomyces, then bacteria and now we are moving to the one more organism that is yeast. As we know the yeast are unicellular fungi. So it uh, belongs to the fungi, but it is a unicellular, heterotrophic, which require the organic carbon as their common source of energy or carbon. And these yeast cells are facultative anaerobe. That means they are able to grow even in the absence of oxygen. And most yeast cells, especially Saccharomyces cerevisiae, is the one which is very important as an industrial microorganism because of the important roles that they play in the production of foods and other products of economic importance. And we know the Saccharomyces cerevisiae is also called as a baker's yeast because we, which is the one which is a very useful in baking and brewing since the ancient times. And the structure if we observe it is going to be of a round to oval shape. So here you can see the structure. It's of a round to oval in shape and they measure about 5 to 10 micrometers in diameter. They produce asexual by means of budding. So this is a budding one. And yeast can also reproduce asexually and this involves two mating haploid yeast. And these yeast are going to be common in the environment and are isolated from sugar rich materials such as palm wine and food products having high carbohydrates. Brewer's yeast, ale yeast, top fermenting yeast, baker's yeast, budding yeast, these are all the different names for the yeast of called Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And these are going to be named in the different forms depending upon the application that being used in the productions. And Saccharomyces cerevisiae can grow aerobically on simple carbohydrate sources such as glucose and the maltose. And these yeast cells use ammonia and urea as their nitrogen source. Yeast also require the phosphorus and some minerals for the optimal growth. And the, these are going to have a very short generation because of having the doubling time within one to two hours. You can easily culture in vitro in the laboratory. These all characters are going to account for their use and preference as a major source of uh, nutritional yeast and yeast extract for most of the fermentation process in the industry. So for this reason, I told these points. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is having a small size and they can easily manipulate it or transform it in the laboratory for increased yield of their metabolite. As they are having the short generation time, they can easily accessed or cultured on a simple culture media such as Sabrod's dextrose agar. 
their growth requirement can easily be obtained and has a tremendous economic benefits which is why they are most preferred yeast for the fermentation process when compared to the other species of yeast and here are the specific industrial significance of yeast that is they are used in the brewing beer they are used in baking bread they are used in the wine fermentation and they are used for the industrial production of ethanol and other industrial fuels and saccharomyces boulardii are used in the production of probiotics use it to maintain the health of the gastrointestinal tract and these yeast are going to convert the sugars into carbon dioxide and the ethanol and this carbon dioxide generated were used to nourish plants in aquarium and not only the advantages we have to read about the industries because uh, this yeast in the industrial level of uh, having the capacity of causing the food spoilage also so these are all the specific industrial significance of is then moving to the uh, industrial importance of molds we know the molds are also fungi but they are filamentous fungi because they are having the high phase so obviously uh, we call it as a filamentous fungi uh, unlike the yeast which are single celled or unicellular these are going to be having the multiple cells and that's how it is having the multicellular fungi they thrive most in moist or wet environment so wherever you are going to have the moisture content and wet environment there we find the profuse growth of these molds or the filamentous fungi these molds are saprophytic in nature that means they grow on dead and decaying matter and these are going to reproduce both by sexual and asexual reproduction methods that means producing the spores and these spores are going to be large numbers and that's why readily spread or dispersed by air and the mycelium if you observe it's a branch intertwining or uh, connected filaments and the whole mass of the hyphae formed by the molds is known as mycelium so here you can see individual is called as hyphae and total the thing is going to be called as mycelium some common molds that are going to be of uh, very much important in industrial level are rhizopus pencilium mucor aspergillus and cladosporium so as i told you these are saprophytes obviously they will grow on dead organic matter and they become visible to the naked eye especially when they form large colonies molds are going to be uh, responsible for the spoilage also uh, for such as pencilium species and rhizobium species out of the spoilage they are also having very much importance in the industrial level in certain productions so what are those specific industrial significance means these molds are having uh, Uh, having the capacity of producing or secreting some hydrolytic enzymes which has the capacity to degrade high molecular weight materials or biopolymers such as starch lignin and cellulose into the simpler form and because of this capability or ability they are going to be used to degrade biological waste in the environment and they also very important in the production of various foods and uh, beverages and some of them are having the capacity of producing the antibiotics such as penicillium chrysozinum and penicillium notatum and these uh, are also going to be responsible in production of wine production food and other beverages the citric acid is the one of the most important one that is being produced by the aspergillus species which is a good solvent uh, and a food preservative in the food industry this aspergillus nicer is commonly used to produce citric acid which is used to produce numerous products ranging from household cleaners pharmaceuticals foods cosmetics photography and construction and that is the one of the reason why this aspergillus species is also commonly used in large scale fermentations in the production of alcoholic beverages too so these are a brief note of these microorganisms that are being used in the industrial level that is one is a bacteria 
then we have seen the actinomyces then yeast and the mounts so we will meet uh, with one more question in another video thank you